got Ricky Escobar with us talking about King of the Cage, Chosen Few, July 8th at the Santa Ana Star Center. Yes, sir. How you feeling, sir? Feel great. Yeah, I feel, feel great. I've been training hard. This has been a while. How long has it been since the last fight? Almost a year since my last fight. So I've been trying to find a fight. Uh, just to work out the way I wanted and finally John Judy called me, offered me this fight and no hesitation. Does so that mean you're like chomping at the bit with excitement to be able to compete again? It's been a whole year? Oh yeah. You know, as an amateur I was getting fights consistently pretty much as often as I wanted. Right. And then turning pro it's a little bit, a little bit harder. <laughs> was it a shock that it was this hard to, to be able to compete? Oh yeah, I thought I thought it'd be easier to find fights, but uh, seems like it kind of dried up once I turned pro. Has it been a problem with weight class? Maybe we know you're 125. There's a good, healthy, you know, mix of flyweights out here, but a lot of them are starting to move over those next right. levels. And having your amateur career, you fought a lot of guys. So is that part of the problem finding new faces to punch? Yeah, I think that's part part of the reason. And there were there were a couple of promotions where I offered to fight at 135 and 125. That way, they have more more options. But it just still didn't work out. Did that take a compromise from you? I know with your entire amateur run, we saw you at 125. Is that a compromise or is that a, a change of your body? That okay, maybe I can take some 35 fights. No, I if if I took a 35 fight, yeah. I would, would cut very little weight. He, the weight difference would be bigger at 135, but I mean, it would be a good challenge and it would be a good, good way to push myself because you can't just say, oh, I'm going to fight you only at this weight class, right? Like, you should be able to take on different... Is that the feel of a martial artist that size shouldn't matter totally? In a way, yeah. Now, with this matchup, you get a veteran. Joey Trevino, I mean, I, countless amateur fights. I, he's got more experience than you, more minutes in the cage, I'm sure, just by how many fights he has. So what do you think of the challenge in front of you? It's, it's going to be interesting because he's got over 20 fights. But who knows how, like the level of competition that he's been fighting. I mean, I've been training with the best guys in the world. Right? So, just fighting him is going to be challenging, it's going to be tough, and the good thing is I'm preparing for it. Most of us that know you, of course you're turning with upper echelon, we see you with John Dodson a lot. You're having a UFC guy pushing you up all the time, what's that like? Yeah, he, I don't train with him as often as I'd like to, but he's, he's one that if, if I get the opportunity to train with him, I'll jump at it. I mean, he's for sure the best one that I, uh, in my weight class, and he's the one who I think pushes me the hardest. There, actually, there are a few, a few people, him, uh, Joby, uh, Tom. And just a few different guys, yeah. Nick or so. So basically everybody, UFC level or I'm talking about like a right on that cusp. Man. This little dangerous pack of flyweights here, right? Oh yeah. What's it like to be part of that group? Because then there's also the Harold the guys, you, Jesse's coming up. It's not just these UFC guys, but there is a big group of flyweights here to work with. Yeah, no, so uh, Jesse Tafoya, you know, he'll he'll probably be making his pro debut by the end of the by the end of the year. He's a wizard on the ground. And then his his striking's getting better and better, always improving. He's a more well rounded fighter. Um, so it's just a beast everywhere. Um, Joey, you know, he's very well rounded. So it's good to see that we have a good, solid uh, group of guys who are at our weight class. That way we can actually train together, push each other, and have that, that uh, what would you say, I guess brotherhood. And, and then you each have your own style, so it also works that you each get a different look from each other. Right, yeah, I mean, Urso's a southpaw, so it's good to work with him. I'm fighting the southpaw. Of course, I'm as far as there, so. Um, you know, Joby's, he's, he's good at wrestling and different things. Lil John's just good at everything. So there's all those different looks that we're getting. That way we each can take from one another and get better. And now, a year, how have you changed? What are we going to see different of Ricky inside the cage? I've definitely worked more ground game. <laughs>
been, I've been training with Russ, Russell Wayne over at Crazy Baja. I've been doing one on ones with him. Um, Andrew Tennyson helps me out. So it's been trying to work more ground game that way. Because those are, those are, as an amateur, those are the only boss I had with submissions. So, so that's been the that's concentration is improving that area. Exactly. What do you got to do on July 8th to get that W? What do you think is going to be key in the What do I got to do? Yeah, I got to just show up and I got to dictate the pace and set, set the pace for the fight. Set, you know, basically dictate and put my game plan into place. Instead of letting him dictate the pace and stick into his game plan. And I, and I gotta focus on what I'm gonna do. I can't worry about what he's gonna do. I, I gotta focus on my game plan. Go out there, fight, and not have to worry about what he's gonna do. For him, with someone that's had so much amateur experience and percent 20 fights, have you done yourself any film study as you're talking about worrying about you? How much have you looked at him? Yeah, I've, I've done a little bit. He's, I know he's South I know he's good off his back. He threatens with different submissions. Um, he's a brawler, but. Uh, I, I, don't, I try not to watch too much film because then I will overwatch it. Overthinking? Overthinking, exactly. How much in fight night is that something also to tell yourself not to overthink, to just go out there and do what you've trained to do with battling those nerves? How much does that play a factor for you in lead up to walking out to the cage? It, I mean, it, it's definitely a factor in it, but that's where the mental toughness comes into play and that's where trying to trying to keep your mind right and repeat different mantras and stay positive and stay focused on the task at hand. What's it going to be like before you get to walk out there? It's been a year. What's the excitement going to be like? How do you get your composure together to go out there and fight when you know you're going to be ultra excited in the back because it's been a year. Look at that smile already Man, thinking about it's, it. it. It's different for every fight. Some fights I'm very calm, others I get overly excited but I think for this one I'm going to be a good level head excited but not too overly excited Santa Ana Star Center it's a big venue King of the Cage did a very good job of filling it up last time I was quite impressed with the crowd for what you know for the knownness that nobody likes to drive all the way out there what do you think of being on the car and being Take fighting in such a big venue now. This is this, this is probably one of the biggest venues I've fought in because I fought at Tinley, I fought at different places, but this is probably the biggest one. And then it's in, I live in Rio Rancho. I graduated at Rio, from Rio Rancho High, so it's going to be good to fight in my little home city, even though uh, nobody likes driving there. It's not that far, it's like 25 minutes. So Just nobody likes the Star Center because the one lane roads. Nobody likes the amphitheater because the one lane roads. Exactly. Does that make it more special to you, walking to the cage in your hometown? Oh, yeah. Like you said, you graduated. I live two minutes away from there, so it's it's going to be easy. It's going to be a good good place to fight. So it's going to have a pro Ricky Esquivel crowd that night? Oh yeah, always. Always a pro Ricky Esquivel crowd. And then I wouldn't be doing my diligence if we didn't talk about it. You have new hair. I do. It's different, right? Right, and then I heard you got something special planned for the fight. Was this uh, something actually planned out? Was this out of boredom? Is this uh, a new trademark look we're going to get for the fight? Who knows? I mean, this I, you know, I, I have a friend. Her name's Ariana. She works at Armando's West Side. She's a stylist, and she, she did this for me. Now, I did get kind of bored of just having black hair. I've had the same hair forever. Uh, so she experimented, she colored it, it was silver, faded to blonde. For the fight it'll be silver again. Maybe kind of like a wolf, right? <laughs> no, a gray wolf. The gray wolf. <laughs> Ricky Esquivel, thank you for the time, sir. Do you have anybody you need to shout out to now? Uh, there, so there's AC Prime. Great air conditioning. They, uh, they've been sponsoring me for this fight camp. So I want to give a shout out to Jason and Ashley. Appreciate them. And uh, Russell White over at Gracie Baja has been helping me with my ground fighting. Joby, Urso, Lil John Dotson, uh, Angie Tennyson, all those guys. You know, they've, been, they've been helping tremendously. Mike Conway over at the UFC gym. Uh, Don Carter at UFC gym, strength and conditioning coach. So thanks to all you guys who helped out.
We'll see you guys at the Santa Star Center July 8th, King of the Cage, Chosen Few.